Hello everyone, welcome again to your own channel, Theoretical Quantum Matter Physics. And here we are with a very important and fundamental concept of quantum matter physics, the reciprocal lattice. And actually I can quite bet that you have gone through this particular topic various times through textbook references and probably few videos also. But somehow absolute clarity about this particular topic is still missing within you, right? However, let me assure you, if you can just give me 5 minutes of your time, you won't have to go through any other video or study material about this conceptualization of reciprocal lattice. Okay? Okay, let's begin. Let's say you are driving a car along a straight road and encountering one lamppost at each 100 meters. However, one other way of defining this phenomena is also that you are encountering 10 lampposts for each kilometer, right? And then the unit of that particular quantity which you are measuring will be kilometer inverse, that is 10 lampposts for each kilometer. Now clearly, if the spacing between the lamppost decreases, definitely the quantity that we are measuring, that is the number of lampposts by each kilometer will increase, right? I hope up to that point, no confusion is there. And of course, I was not talking about the lamppost and the curve. You can map actually the lamppost directly to the periodic arrow of atoms. And the curve, this actually symbolizes the light, to be specific the X-ray. That is actually what is passing through that periodic array or in other words, the crystal. Now, a similar kind of thing happens to that passing light the very famous Bragg diffraction. And as you know from the law of Bragg's diffraction, 2D sine theta is equals to N lambda. Or sine theta is inversely proportional to D. Or in other words, the angular separation theta between the maxima is inversely proportional to D, which is the interatomic spacing between the crystals. Now from the law itself, one thing is very clear that with the increase of interatomic spacing, the distance between the two maxima decreases. Or in other words, if you are considering a screen of fixed width, then the number of maxima within the screen will actually increase. And hence, for diffraction, we get more number of maxima within the screen, right? Now let's try to understand what is this one by D. If we have a tetragonal lattice and we are considering X direction only, then definitely D will be the lattice parameter A, right? So the diffraction pattern will directly relate to that one by A or more technically speaking, B cross C, that is the area in YZ plane divided by A dot B cross C by volume. So that will be actually one by A, right? Therefore, a clear understanding of the reciprocal lattice factors is very useful in the study of diffraction. And if you remove the constant weightage, the diffraction pattern is actually a clear visualization of the reciprocal lattice. Now, let me give you some more information about that. If you add some impurity to that crystal structure, the diffraction pattern will still remain the same, while the intensity of some of the maxima may vary. Now, another thing that you should know in this context is, even if you are measuring something amorphous, which does not actually have a crystal structure, then also the examination of the diffraction pattern can provide some very useful data, like the average distance between the atoms and molecules of that matter, right? However, so that was it. And I hope no further question about reciprocal lattice is there. And still, if you are having some doubt, definitely you can just comment here in the comment box. And thank you, thank you all. Uh, okay, let's meet again in the next video and till then like share and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you all